Hi, here's a quick video on how to do exposure blending or bracketed blending. Three images taken at different exposures. The same image essentially, but one taken a stop under, one taken a stop over, and one taken pretty much in the middle. So here's three images. Here's one that's over. And these are taken a little time apart because we were waiting on the sun coming up. So here's one over. Here's one pretty much in the middle. And what I mean is over is um, this is going to show you every bit of light detail in the image. If I just wait till this renders a wee bit. And at the other end, this is the dark one that shows you all the dark parts of the cloud that aren't visible in the over. So we're going to take these three and open them up in Photoshop. So I'm in Bridge. How you get them into the Photoshop is your own way is fine. But I'm in Bridge, so we go Tools, Photoshop, Photoshop, and Merge to HDR Pro. And Photoshop will then do its magic. Let me just sit and wait till Photoshop does it. And it will spell a file in this dialog box. Now, if you tick remove, go at the moment, this is what it's decided needs to be kept from all those photos. It's, and if you click on this one here, remove ghosts, it will try and remove anything it thinks is moving which may well be some of these clouds up here which have got the detail in them there's nothing else moving in this so I'm just going to leave it unchecked where you may get some ghosting would be on these trees for instance but I'll leave it unchecked and it looks a bit odd just now but then we come down here to say tone and ACR and ACR is Adobe Camera Raw and that's where we're going to bring back some of the colours and details. And it will take a few seconds. So here's the image in Camera Raw. Now it's a 32-bit image and it's going to give you a little issue. So hopefully you have Lightroom as well, but if not, then there is another workaround, but we'll come back to that if need be. So usually we've got five stops of anything, but once you've done this, you've actually got 10 stops. Now, 10 stops of anything is probably far too much, but it gives you 10 stops anyway. So your movements on the sliders here are going to be less than normal. So go to highlights first. And we'll bring the highlights away down. And it's going to affect the shadows when we're doing this, but that's fine. You can take them all the way down to there, but it looks too kind of unnatural. So but maybe there looks not bad at the minute. And I don't want all the shadows up. I'm going to take some of them up. So this tool here is a brush tool. So if you select the brush, I uh, go to shadows on this. If you click here at the right hand side where it says V plus, give it one return. And if you right click on your mouse and move right, you make the brush bigger. If you right click and move left across your table, it makes it a little bit smaller. So I've added some shadow in there and now we'll decide how much I actually want to add there. Too much, too much, too much, and that's not bad. I'm going to add a little bit of warmth in there. Get a little bit of colour back in there. Now these trees were probably moving, so we'll probably have to crop that out. But that's not bad at that. Now I'm going to get a new brush. I'm going to up the colour temperature a little, not much, and the tint a little. Again, small movements. Oh, too much. 
start from here again. And we can bring this into there. Do do one movement to start with. And then you could decide if it's too much or too little. I think that's too much, so I'm going to take it back a bit. So a little bit warms in there and a little bit of this pinky colour. That's fine. And then another new brush. And this time we're going to add a bit of clarity to the middle. And the clarity should sharpen everything up, so we'll give it one click. That will take it up too far and we'll draw it back once we're done with it. So again, we draw it back to about there, just about 15, not bad. Now if you hit the letter P on your keyboard, if you click my hand here first, and then you hit the letter P on your keyboard, that will show the changes you've made to it in here. And you see it's quite drastic. Now we can add a little bit more vibrance. Vibrance will make the greens greener and the red redder. Not so much like saturation, but it just kills everything. More the kind of middle of the range of the tones. And that's not bad there. Again, we can add just a little bit more clarity. And maybe just a tiny wee bit more exposure. No, no, no more exposure. Let's put a wee more contrast. And we could take shadows down or up to suit. And maybe just up a little bit more. And then click OK. And you'll have made the adjustments that you want. And looking at this here, these don't look the best. So I'm going to crop them out. So we get a crop tool. And I've already got this set up here, but when you click the crop, the crop tool, if you come up to here, you can decide on what aspect ratio you want. You will have shot in 2 to 3, but we're going to change it to here, 16 to 9. And I'm going to crop, I'm going to move the whole image up a bit to start with. So the mountains neatly into the upper third. And I'm going to crop in. And I may have to move that bit because I don't want all these trees to look a bit pasty. Maybe in about there. Yep, happy with that. Crop to there. And the last thing you're going to have to do is save it. Now, because it's a 32-bit image, Photoshop won't save it gives you the save as options and if you go down here it won't let you save it as a JPEG so what you do is you save it here as a TIFF and that's one I did there so let's call this bracket aid and it's a TIFF 32 and we're saving it there click save just click OK and you see it's been saved as a 32-bit. If we change it here, we'll lose some colours. We're not going to change it here. And once it's finished saving, it's a big file with lots of information in it now, much more than when you started with the three small images. And just to show you how big it is, if we go to image size, we're at 5,334 pixels. So it's probably only half of that when we started. So it's just about there. Okay, that's that saved as a TIFF. Now, if you've got Photoshop 15, 2015, you will have Lightroom as well. So open your Lightroom up. And when your Lightroom is open, you want to come up to File, do, 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 Import Photo and Video. And 
it's going to take a minute to get to where you want to be so we're looking for this folder and it's going to select everything in the folder that I've already got and I'm going to unselect it uncheck all uh, we're looking for the one I just named bracketed which is this one here so we'll tick that click import only one file there if you then click on the tab here it says develop and you can make any other tweaks you want in here so maybe just re-tweak the contrast or the exposure and you could again you could do this by a brush uh, the brush is here and that one uh, maybe just drop the exposure just a bit on the top of the image and again on the bottom of the image and a new brush will maybe just up the shadows just a tiny wee bit across this bit of the image and that's it and once you've done all the tweaks that you want and we can change various things in this with this brush actually we could do noise and we could reduce the noise or add to it you'll not see it but it'll be happening in the shadows and it makes it that a little bit sharper so once you've done all your changes on here you got to file export the export dialog box will open and it'll let you export it to exactly where you want to put it so we're we can put this in its own wee folder which i'll do that and we'll just call it bracketed and it'll ask you what file type i'm just going to call this old one further down ask you the file type we're already as a TIFF, but we're going to change it to a JPEG and leave everything else and export. Whoop. And Lightroom will, Lightroom will take a few minutes to do it. It takes a wee bit longer because I've got all these other programs open. So now when we're going here, we should have another folder. This little one here. And it's now a JPEG, which Photoshop wouldn't let you do. And there it is, all edited for you. Now you might say the boat's not really sharp. If it's sharp enough, Photoshop will... And that would have been bobbing about this little boat. But there you go, Photoshop fixed it. Bracket in, and how to bracket using Photoshop.